Well, good evening. I'm Courtney Donaldson, and if Suzanne is the extrovert, I'm the introvert. So I'm going to talk to you from back here tonight. <laughs> I'm just kidding, sort of. As Suzanne mentioned, we had a speaker that had to cancel at the last minute. So at 3 p.m., we found out that we'd be sharing the 20-minute spot. I usually shower. <laughs> Seriously, though, what I want to share with you tonight is how, through my story, I learned not to let personal judgments and expectations hinder my ability to hear God. Unfortunately, I was one of those people who judged. And to Debbie and to anyone else who has been on the receiving end of that, I am so very sorry. Whether you're married, single, or divorced, this is for you. My short version and not-so-sweet story is that five years ago, last month, my husband of 13 years came to me and shared with me that he had had multiple extramarital affairs, that he could not stop looking at pornography, and that he had been lying to me for our entire marriage. And I knew nothing about it. I had no red flags. I had no suspicions. So you can imagine the devastation that I felt. Over nine days, he shared with me with each passing day, he shared with me more information about this secret and double life. I thought we were happily married. Prior to this, I was someone who would read about Tiger Woods or the Clinton family, and I would think to myself, why in the world would those spouses stay with that cheating husband or wife or whatever the case may be? I was someone who, in my head, would criticize their decision. I had never been in their shoes, but that didn't matter to me. I was raised to be independent, which in and of itself is not a bad thing, except when you're independent from God. Biblically, I feel like God does give an out for people who share the same story as me and other similar stories. And so I would hook my belief system on that. But I was never in those shoes, so I wasn't to know what God was going to share with me when that actually happened to me. In fact, while we were dating and engaged and in the early years of our marriage, I would turn to my husband when I heard of stories of other cheating spouses or sex addiction, and I would turn to him and say, if you ever did that, I'm out. I'm out. No questions asked. Don't even, you know, just pack your bags and leave and leave me a note because there is no way I'm staying with you. And I didn't say those things because I was suspicious. In fact, I had put my husband on a pedestal and didn't think that he was even capable of it. I said those things because I was operating from a very wounded heart from my childhood, a heart that had been abandoned over and over by friends. And so I wasn't judging because I was suspicious. I wasn't threatening him because I had any inkling of what was going on. I was saying those things because I was the wounded one, and I wasn't letting God heal me. Can you imagine what he was thinking? All those years, he knew what his secret life was. Can you imagine what he was thinking when he wanted to share it with me, thinking that that would be the end? Then it happened. The unthinkable happened, and he shared with me that he didn't know how to stop. Everything seemed lost. And that's when God showed me that my expectations are not as important as God's desire. He showed me that other people's opinions are not as important as his own. 
God showed me that the statistics of our day, where 50% of people who get married end up in divorce, don't matter to him. God showed me that none of this can touch his redemptive power and his saving grace. God loves working in the environments where we can't operate. He loves working in the environments of the impossible because he knows that he will get all the glory because I can promise you that the fact that my husband and I are still married and we're about to celebrate 18 years and we are happily married and we've become marriage mentors for the community, I can only point up and say that had nothing to do with me. What I did was rather than look at in that moment, in those raw nine days when he was revealing his, his secret life to me, all I could do was look at God and instead of say, this is what should happen, all I could do was say, what now? So rather than say, my idea of justice is kicking him out. My idea of justice would be divorce. My idea of what's right and what I deserve and how I was raised and how I can stand up for myself is to pack his bags and kick him out. God said, no, my justice is different. So rather than say, why, I asked, what now? And that's when God answered. On day three of that nine-day reveal, I was sitting in my bed, just sobbing, because I had learned yet another secret. And I just pulled out my Bible, and I opened to the book of Psalms. That's just where I opened. <laughs> and I, I said, God, what do I do with this? What now? Because I know what my flesh wants to do. I know how I was raised. Society would say, get out. My friends, my family, culture, statistics, movies, books, they would all say, pack your bags and get out and run. But I said, God, what do you say? And he answered in three words, don't leave yet. And I know that he put that yet in there because he is the most compassionate being ever. He knew that if he just said, don't leave, that I would say, but, what about this? But, don't I deserve better? But, in the Bible, it says that I can. Instead, he said, don't leave yet. That's a loving God. So, my message for all of you, no matter what your status is, is that I encourage you to die to yourself. I encourage you to die to your expectations of how things should be based on how you were raised or based on cultural expectations, based on your own limited beliefs, your own narrow vision. Put aside what should be, in quotes, and listen to God's direction. Listen for his voice. Because the fact of the matter is that you don't know what you would do in any circumstance or situation until you're there. And the best thing you can do is allow God, not anyone else, to be the protector of your heart. So singles, God will protect your heart. Divorcees, God is protecting your heart. And those who are married... God should protect your heart, then your spouse. Thank you.